And welcome back. So let's keep going from where we left off. So let's try example K. This one here, it doesn't fit any of your basic rules. So when that happens, you have to play with it a little bit. So we're gonna take this secant out here and we're gonna distribute. So secant y, tangent y. Minus secant squared of y. And what we've done is now we've created things that we can actually integrate. So the integral of secant tangent is just secant and then minus the integral of secant squared, which would be tangent. Okay, and then just for fun, we'll do this four over x. So the four, that's just your constant, it just stays. So it's really like four times one over x, so the derivative, or the integral, sorry, the integral of one over x would be ln of the absolute value of x. And then the integral of negative sine is a positive cosine. Let's see. All right, example five, solve the differential equation. So now it's written in a little bit different format here. So they're giving you the derivative, and when it says solve the differential equation, in essence, they're saying, hey, find the original function. So like find f of x. So if you're starting with a derivative, how do you go from the derivative to the original function? You gotta integrate. So f of x is gonna equal the integral of whatever this derivative is, whatever they gave you. So 6x minus x, 8x to the third dx. So we're going to integrate this, and that will become 3x squared minus 2x to the fourth, and plus c. So in the previous problems, you were done, but we have different instructions. You have to solve the differential equation. So you're looking for the exact f of x. So don't stop here because your job now is to figure out the plus c and that's why they gave you this little piece of data right there. So again this is your f of x. So now you have to use this info to solve for the c. So plug the 2 in for x. So it would be 12 minus 2 to the 4th is 16 times the negative 2 is 32 plus C. So when I plug the 2 in, I know it has to equal 3. And so now C is the only variable, and now you can solve for it. And C is going to equal 23. And now that you know what the C is, you can plug it back into the function. And there is your solution to the differential equation. So let's talk about this one. We're not going to do it, but we'll talk about it. Uh, you've, you're starting with the second derivative. So if you're starting with the second derivative, how many times do you think you're going to have to integrate? Twice. Yeah, so if you integrate once, it'll get you to the derivative. But you're going to have a, a C to solve for, so you use this. Well, then you got to integrate one more time to get you to the function and then you can use this last piece to solve for that additional c. So if you have questions about it just go ahead and email me or talk to me during office hours. Okay so let's try uh, everybody's favorite problem the word problem. So Drew is in a hot air balloon rising vertically with a velocity of 8 feet per second. He releases a sandbag at the instant he is 24 feet from the ground I uh, use a of t equals negative 32 feet per second, so that's his acceleration uh, as acceleration due to gravity. So how many seconds after its release will the bag hit the ground? So we're given acceleration. So the question is asking something about its position. 
So if we're starting with acceleration, we need to get to position. You have to integrate twice. Hmm, kind of like that one up there. So if you integrate once, it'll get you to velocity. And it's with respect to time. So negative 32t plus c. Well, I got to figure out the C before I can go on. <clears throat> so he's rising vertically with a velocity of eight feet per second. So when time is zero, his velocity is eight. So if you work that out, C is eight. So now his velocity it's just negative 32t plus 8. Well, now you can get position. So we're just going to integrate velocity. And we end up with negative 16t squared plus 8t plus c. So we got to solve for that C again. So somewhere in there, they gave us some other data that we can use. And that's when he's 24 feet from the ground. So when time is zero for the first position, so when he drops the sandbag, that's when he's 24 feet off the ground. So let's stick in a zero for T. So your C is 24, so that gives you a position of negative 16T squared plus 8T plus 24. So we'd like to think we're done, but we're not, because it didn't want just the function. This is how many seconds will it hit the ground? Now that you have your position function, set it equal to the height of the ground. Well, the height of the ground is just zero. So now you got to solve this equation here. So solve that quadratic. So let's uh, divide everything by negative eight. Factor it. And solve for t. So three over two, negative one, but we can't have negative time. So just three over two seconds. Okay, and then for B, at what velocity will it hit the ground? Well, you know the time that it hits. So stick that into velocity. So negative 40 feet per second. And that's negative because what direction is the bag headed? It's going down. So when you're going down towards the earth, your velocity is going to be negative. Okay, so in the next video, I will do the last example from 5.1.